Hey, gals and guys, it's Chris Mosher from MyMediaHelper.com with the last day of my Halloween movie reviews. Today, we are going to analyze and criticize and look at five films that are on Crackle. Well, actually, four films that are on Crackle. I, I cheated in the last one, which uh, I'll explain to you later. And as far as uh, people that criticize, people that review movies, people that um, analyze them and give their opinion, it's just our opinion. Um, I think we all realize how much work goes into these films, depending on the level of work, depending on the film. Um, we're not we're not blind to that fact, but that doesn't mean that um, we can't look at a film and criticize it and hate it and like it. Um, critics are around for a reason; they're around to uh, give opinion. So um, you can you can like that answer or not. Uh, I've been in a couple crappy movies, which, um, so I have been on the other side. So I have seen the amount of work that goes into it. That doesn't mean the movies that I were in were any good. And I can honestly say they really weren't, <laughs> but I get how much work goes into it. So I'm not demeaning or diminishing anyone's hard work into a film. I'm just putting it into a package as a whole and looking at it and saying, okay, is this something that I really... Uh, want to offer up to other people to to look at to have them waste their time looking at it um, and in some cases my opinion might count for something in some cases my opinion may not it's an opinion it's like assholes we all have one right and your opinion might be different than mine so you can take it with a grain of salt these are the films i looked at these are the films i criticized i either thumbs up or thumbs down them or somewhere in the middle so take it for a grain of salt. I just wanted to throw that out there because um, I'm sick of people saying, Oh, well, what have you done? All you do is criticize and not create. That's lame. Don't be lame. That's stupid. That's like going to a fucking restaurant and ordering something and it's complete shit. But uh, the chef put so much time into it. So just eat the crap, even though it tastes like shit. And then go back again then have some more shit. No, 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 no. Life doesn't work that way. So with that all said, with this tangent, let's get into the five films. Well, four films through Crackle, and I'll explain the last one at the end. All right, let's get this done. You know the drill. If you've seen my other movie review videos, I like to show the logos of the free streaming services you can find online that offer free streaming movies and television shows. In the description, I post the links of the movies I discuss and review in the video. At least they were free at the time of reviewing the movie. You can also comment below and tell me your thoughts on the films being spotlighted or perhaps even recommend your own. Here are the five free streaming films we'll be covering this time out. And in this edition of My Media Helpers Entertainment Online Halloween Reviews, we are going to focus on the streaming service Crackle. Let's get her done. Howl is a 2015 British horror film directed by Paul Hyatt and starring a bunch of people I've never heard of. Hyatt is known for his effect collaborations with fellow British horror film director Neil Marshall. Hyatt has previously been a special effects, creature prosthetic, and makeup designer for Marshall's earlier films such as Doomsday, The Descent, Centurion, and Dog Soldiers. The latter 2002 film, also a werewolf movie, Howell opens with Alpha Tracks train guard Joe Griffin doing a shift on an overnight passenger train, which is scheduled to depart London at midnight. The regular guard is sick. His only consolation is the chance to spend time with his unrequited love, the tea trolley girl, Ellen. A shot of the full moon is shown piercing through a heavy thunderstorm as the train travels. Ooh. A few miles before reaching the final station, Eastboro, the train nearly derailed in a forested area when it hit a deer. The driver is forced to make an emergency stop to check the situation and finds the dead deer stuck to the wheels, which he tries to remove. As he struggles with deer carcass, a nearby werewolf attacks and kills him. Unaware of the dangers outside, the remaining passengers learn that an emergency team will not be able to reach the train due to downed trees all along the line. Isn't that just always the case? They are on their own. The interior train shots were filmed in Croydon, London, and London Waterloo Station in Lambeth. Exterior shots were filmed in the Black Park Country Park adjacent to Pinewood Studios. The film had no theatrical release, but was shown at several international film festivals before its release on home video. 
Howl first premiered at Fantasy Film Fest, which was held in Germany on August 5th of 2015. It was subsequently shown at Fright Fest in the United Kingdom on August 31st and Popcorn Frights Film Festival in the United States on October 3rd. The DVD release date was initially set for October 16th of the same year, but had been pushed back close to Halloween on October 26th. The DVD was age-rated 18 in the UK market due to disturbing imagery and graphic and bloody violence. The film was met with generally positive response and currently has a 63% on Rotten Tomatoes based on 16 reviews. 30 minutes in and nothing had happened. The train has stopped and people have pissed and moaned that the train has stopped. I thought about my ex-wife. I thought about what I needed at the store. I thought about how I needed to go to the laundry and wash some clothes. If anything, the film allowed me to think about pretty much everything beyond what I was supposed to be watching. I took a break for a few minutes, got something to eat. All right, this thing is 90 minutes. Let's see what the next 30 minutes bring. Maybe we'll see a fucking wolf. In the second half hour, we had people walking, then we had people see something in the woods and hear a wolf howling. The people hightail it back to the train where our first attack happens. The lady gets her leg ripped into 40 minutes in and something is happening. After that 40 minutes, it picks up and gets a bit better. The creature effects are great. Nothing really new to say here. Just your old-fashioned run-of-the-mill werewolf movie with lots of bloody kills. The movie is fine, with the back half being much better than the slow burn beginning. You have disposable characters you care nothing about. It was just fine. Not a total waste of time, I suppose. <laughs> How is that for a glowing uh, testimonial? Resident Evil is a 2002 action horror film written and directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. The film stars Mila Jovovich, oh Mila, my love, Michelle Rodriguez, Eric Mabius, James Perfo, Martin Cruz, and Colin Salmon. If you watch my other videos, you know I destroy people's names. Sorry about that. It is the first installment in the Resident Evil film series, which is loosely based on the video game series of the same name. The film was initially titled Resident Evil Ground Zero, but was retitled after September 11th attacks. Borrowing elements from the video games Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2, the film follows amnesiac heroine Ellis and a band of Umbrella Corporation commandos as they attempt to contain the outbreak of the T-virus at a secret underground facility. The film received negative reviews from critics and grossed $103 million worldwide against a production budget of $33 million. Developed as a prequel set in the same continuity as the video game series, the film was followed by five sequels establishing their own alternate continuity, Apocalypse in 2004, Extinction 2007, Afterlife 2010, Retribution 2012, and the final chapter of 2016. Underneath Raccoon City exists a genetic research facility called Hive, owned by the Umbrella Corporation. A thief steals the genetically engineered T-virus and contaminates the hive with it. In response to the facility's artificial intelligence, the Red Queen seals the hive and kills everyone inside. Alice awakens in the bathroom of a deserted mansion with amnesia. She dresses, checks the mansion, and is tackled by an unknown person as a group of commandos led by James Shades breaks in. Alice's attacker is cuffed and then released when he claims to be Matt Addison, who just transferred as a cop in Raccoon PD. Alice and Matt are ordered to go down to the hive with Group, where they find another amnesiac, Spence, hidden in their train. The commandos explain that everyone in the group except Matt is an employee of the Umbrella Corporation, and Alice and her partner Spence were assigned to guard the hive's secret entrance under the mansion under the pretense of being married. Sounds like a fucking soap opera. I'm not going to get too much into the production specifics of the movies. It really needs its own video spotlight. Let me tell you, I love the first Resident Evil movie. I'm not overly crazy about any of the sequels, but I've seen this movie a handful of times. Let me just say I highly recommend this movie for your Halloween viewing, and I plan to spin this review off into its own thing when I have the chance. The series deserves that kind of time. But for now... Go watch this fucking movie. Dave Made a Maze is a 2017 American fantasy adventure comedy horror film directed by Bill Watterson. The film centers on titular Dave, who builds a cardboard fort that somehow supernaturally houses an entire labyrinth full of deadly traps and creatures. 
It premiered at the Slamdance Film Festival on January 21st of 2017, where it won an Audience Award for Best Narrative. It was released on August 18th of 2017 by Gravitas Ventures. While his girlfriend Annie is away for the weekend, 30-year-old Dave works fervently, fervently? On his next big art project, Dave has for years had a habit of not being able to finish anything, and it's apparently jobless as he gets his income from his parents, whom he believes are tired of him. He finally has a breakthrough and begins to build something from the center and work his way out. When Anne comes home, she is surprised to find Dave's project a small cardboard fort that is supposedly bigger on the inside. Dave, who communicates with Annie from the vents he added, tells her not to enter or destroy his project. When Annie shakes the exterior, she is confused by the abundance of noise and machinery she hears on the outside. This was a very awesome movie. I wouldn't say it's overly layered in horror, but there are some deaths along the way, so perhaps we will place it in that genre. I just thought it was a clever idea for a movie, executed magnificently with practical effects, even... God, I miss and love practical effects. It's certainly something different, and I would highly recommend this film, no matter what time of year it is. I'm happy I came upon it, so check it out. It's great. I've seen this movie all over the place, so I figured someone or something was trying to tell me something. And as they say, we left the best for last, and holy fuck, isn't that the case? Ginger Snaps was by the far the best film reviewed all week. It was really good, and fits perfectly into the Halloween theme, being about werewolves and all. Ginger Snaps is a 2000 Canadian supernatural horror film directed by John Fawcett, who also co-wrote the film with Karen Walton. It stars Emily Perkins and Catherine Isabel as two teenage sisters who have fascination with death. After premiering at the Munich Fantasy Film Fest and screening at the 2000 Toronto International Film Festival, the film was released in theaters to commercial and critical success. It has amassed a cult following since its release. It was followed by a sequel, Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed, what was good, and a prequel, Ginger Snaps Back the Beginning, which uh, wasn't so good. Uh, both those films were filmed back to back and both released in 2004. Writer-director John Fawcett has said, I knew that I wanted to make a metamorphosis movie and a horror film. I also knew that I wanted to work with girls, don't we all? (laughs) In January of 1995, he talked to screenwriter Karen Walton, who was initially reluctant to write the script due to the horror genre's reputation for weak characters, poor storytelling, and a negative portrayal of women. However, Fawcett convinced Walton this film would reinterpret the genre. The two encountered trouble financing the film. They approached producer Steve Hoban, with whom they had worked with before, and he agreed to produce the film. Hoban employed Ken Shubb to edit and polish the story, and after two years, they were ready to seek financers. Motion International committed to co-financing the Canadian distribution, and Trimark Pictures agreed to be the co-financer, U.S. distributor, and international sales agent. The film seemed ready to go into production by fall of 1998. However, negotiations with Trimark caused the producers to miss the budgeting deadline for Telefilm Canada, the Canadian Federal Film Fundancy Agency. Rather than go ahead with only 60% of the funding, Hoban decided to wait a year for Telefilm's funding. During this interval, Trimark dropped the film. Lionsgate Films, who Trimark would end up merging with in 2000, took Trimark's place, and Unipix Entertainment agreed to distribute the film on DVD along with Artisan Entertainment for the American DVD release. The film's budget was a mere $4.5 million. Principal photography took place on October 25th and December 6th of 1999, lasting a little over six weeks. Three of Toronto's suburbs, Etobicoke, Brampton, and Scarborough served as the suburb of Bailey Downs. Shooting outside during Toronto's winter for 16 hours a day, six days a week, meant that sickness would make their rounds through the cast and crew every few weeks. On the first day of shooting in the suburbs, all the still photographs for the title sequence were created. The bloody stage deaths drew a crowd, and Fawcett worried about upsetting the neighbors. The girls were covered in fake blood for the shots, and at the time, a homeowner's basement served as their changing room. Each time they needed to change, someone had to distract the homeowner's four-year-old child. Long shooting days pushed the earliest possible start later each day until the scenes written for the day were being shot after late into the night. Director of photography Tom Best solved the problem by using diffusion gel and 418 kilowatt lamps, which generated enough light to be seen a mile high in the sky. 
The special effects proved to be a major hardship as Fawcett eschewed CGI effects and preferred to use more traditional means of prosthetics and makeup. Consequently, Isabella had to spend up to seven hours in the makeup chair to create Ginger's metamorphosis and a further two hours to remove them, often covered in sticky fake blood and required borax and household detergent to remove. She further endured wearing contacts that hindered her vision and teeth that meant she could not speak without a lisp. The most aggravating thing was the full facial prosthetic, which gave her a permanently runny nose that she had to stop with cotton swabs. Ginger Snaps premiered at the Munich Fantasy Film Fest in 2000, the following month it played at the 2000 Toronto International Film Festival, where it briefly received media attention following the positive word of mouth it had built up from the Munich. Although called one of the standouts of the Toronto Festival, the tension died off, and the film followed an unfocused release strategy playing at various film festivals and building up more word of mouth. Ginger Snaps was released to Canada Cinemas in May of 2001. It grossed 425753 Canadian dollars domestically, making it the fifth highest grossing Canadian film between December 2000 and November 2001. Owing to a call following, it has achieved significant video and DVD sales. These earnings combined with moderate theatrical success abroad led to the production of two further films. Now, I avoided this movie for a few years now. Uh, the trailers didn't do much for me, and all I could think of were those terrible twilight movies yes i tried to watch a twilight movie once i think i lasted about uh, 20 minutes as you can imagine this was a nice surprise and i'm shouting its brilliance i love this movie the wolf effects are great the chemistry between the two leads that betrayed sisters was great mimi rogers is still hot as fuck and great watch this movie it's uh it's great so I watched two terrible movies on Crackle back to back. They were an accidental zombie named Ted. God awful movie. The other was Into the Labyrinth, which answered a question I've had for a very long time. Whatever the hell happened to Dustin Hoffman? My question has been answered. He's off appearing in shitty movies. Labyrinth was also terrible. With both those crap fests behind me, I am so cheating with this last one. Ginger Snaps 2 isn't streaming on Crackle, but it is streaming for free on Tubi. Not wanting to have to endure what could be possibly another terrible cracker horror movie, I am breaking the rules here. I already edited and uploaded the Tubi video, but tough shit in this case. I love the Ginger Snaps so much, I am going to treat myself to the sequel. Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed is a 2004 Canadian horror film written by Megan Martin and directed by Brett Sullivan. It is the second installment in the Ginger Snaps series and sequel to the original 2000 Ginger Snaps directed by executive producer John Fawcett and written in collaboration with Karen Walton. A prequel, Ginger Snaps Back the Beginning, was filmed back-to-back -back with Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed and was also released in 2004. Bridget Fitzgerald uses monk's shoot, I guess, extract to find these effects of lycanthrop lycanthropy? lycanthropy that transformed her sister Ginger into a werewolf. Bridget shaves off excess hair, cuts her arm with a scalpel, and logs the data about her healing ability. Ginger appears as an apparition and warns her that monk's shoot only slows her transformation progression and is not a cure. After Bridget injects a second dose of monk shoot, she senses the presence of a male werewolf that has been stalking her. She quickly packs and opens the door, only to find Jeremy, a flirtatious librarian who's brought her several books she attempted to check out earlier. The second injection causes toxic shock, and Jeremy attempts to bring her to the hospital. However, the male werewolf mauls him to death. Bridget stumbles down the street and collapses in the snowbank. Bridget wakes in a rehab clinic. Sequels are rarely better than their original, and that holds true here as well. I still thought it was a good follow-up. I also checked out the other sequel, or prequel actually, Ginger Snaps Back, the beginning. You can skip that one. It wasn't very good and didn't have anything really to do with the first two. Stick to the first two. Uh, first one, awesome, as I said. Second one, not terrible, watchable, pretty good. Both great for Halloween season, and that concludes uh, our movies for this 20. 22 season. Halloween season, anyways. And as far as Crackle is concerned, you just go to Crackle, and then you just click on movies, and it has genres right here. So you look down these genres, and there is horror, and then you have these films free to stream, and uh, yeah, knock yourselves out. Make sure you check out the four that I uh, spotlighted in this, and then uh, that extra cheating 2v1, which is... Um, 
I just saw it. There's Ginger Snaps. Ginger Snaps too. All right, gals and guys, this is uh, the conclusion of our Halloween edition. Seven days, seven seven days of um, different free streaming services that you can go and watch uh, horror movies for your spooky, spooky season. I hope you have a happy Halloween. <clears throat> you get more uh, treats than tricks, and I appreciate you as always. If you could please. Yeah. Subscribe, please subscribe. Come on, like this video and share this video and hit that bell for updates. And I appreciate you as always. I'll be doing Christmas ones if I can find Christmas ones. I've already started and it's very difficult, much harder than finding horror movies. Trust me, holiday movies, good holiday movies are tough to find that are watchable, but we'll get through it. Those will be coming in a couple months. I'll be getting back to uh, tutorials and other nonsense and boo, bah, boo, happy Halloween.